Most pan manufacturers that make ceramic cookware call their pan ceramic, but they may not be ceramic and they probably are more toxic than Teflon ever was. The market for coated cookware in 2024 was $5.4 billion. And by 2032, it's estimated to be 7.9 billion. These are huge numbers. And in the houseware industry, 5% growth year over year is healthy. The brands that dominate the industry are big and they have deep pockets because generally buying cheaply made coated cookware from somewhere like China and selling it into North America at a premium makes you a lot of money. If you had a fistful of cash, you could start your own ceramic cookware business easily. If you're good at marketing and knew about logistics, you'd do just fine. You see, finding a manufacturer in China that makes ceramic coated cookware that looks pretty much exactly the same and works exactly the same way as many of the top manufacturers is easy. Like the numbers are that generally you can go to China and if you buy enough volume, you can buy a pan that sells in North America for 130, $150, $200. And you can be spending five or $7 in a box made exactly the same. So you can see the type of margin that is in a pan like that, that can be contributed to the massive amount of marketing that you see in the marketplace. So on the street, people are very concerned about words like Teflon or the, the acronyms that we all hear that are bad. And this opened the door for a product like ceramic. Ceramic pans are silica based. So they're, they're a, a type of quasi ceramic um, coating. They have a type of baked core ingredients to it, but it is not a ceramic pan, but they have something that is related to ceramic that is in the core of the coating. And that is applied to usually an aluminum vessel and it's a coated type pan. These have always been thought of as being completely natural and benign. These plans were received very well. People thought they were a great green alternative to Teflon and people were okay buying them, even though that the performance was quite a lot less than Teflon and life was a fraction of anything else out there. Like basically the first generation of these types of pans didn't work that well and didn't last very long, but they were nonstick for a certain amount of time and people wanted to get away from Teflon. They've improved dramatically over the years. So you get a decent life and they are much more nonstick than they once were, but they still are nowhere near as good as a brand new Teflon pan. So as I was saying, this is a quasi type ceramic coating. These are not ceramic pans. So when you think of a ceramic pan, you would think of like a teapot or a, a casserole, something that is 100% ceramic. These pans are nowhere near that. There are brands on the market that make 100% ceramic cookware that, that by all accounts is really good stuff and works very well and is a natural product. But what we're talking about today is what generally you'd walk into a hardware store and see ceramic nonstick pans. So the companies that make these so-called ceramic pans don't share their formulas. The independent testing that's been done has shown what type of ingredients are in these pans, but they basically treat these as trade secrets and won't tell anybody what's in the, the ingredients, the base ingredients of their ceramic mixture. One independent company did testing on some of these nonstick pans, of these ceramic nonstick pans, and these were some of the ingredients that they found to be inside them. I'm gonna read these out because uh, they are some tongue twisters. Um, there was silane, aluminum oxide, tetra silane, methra trimoxalide silane and potassium titrate and one consumer protection agency tested green pan, Owood pan and caraway and found titanium dioxide nanoparticles, which are linked to neurotoxicity and intestinal inflammation and other health impacts. And just for reference, all of the sources in which I've just said are available in the links below of this video. So this all has to do with how this market around coated cookware is regulated or isn't. So the responsibility is that each manufacturer has to be testing their own cookware and reporting if they find anything that could be a health hazard. So this was exactly what DuPont was supposed to be doing when it for generations poisoned its employees in its factories 
and the communities around those factories and was then found liable for doing this. They were supposed to be self-reporting and now the chemicals that were produced in those factories are reportedly in almost every single living person and animal on the planet. There's very few regulations and very little oversight. Basically, the cookware company can do whatever they want. The punishment comes is if they get caught. In the world of Teflon, the amount of, of toxic chemical that is actually used in the pans is very, 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 very small. However, the issue comes with what happens over a long-term effect of exposure. This is something that will never be definitive because if somebody was to develop some sort of a health effect that would be somewhat associated with what PFAS or PTFE, PTFE has been proven to do to somebody, over the lifespan of that person, there'd be no way to know if it was the cookware or the smog that they drove to on the way to work or something else that they were exposed to at work or the three Big Macs they decided to eat every week for 20 years. So testing has shown that using nonstick cookware that is sold today does not directly cause any sort of issue. That, that means is that you're gonna use the pan today, you're not gonna create a tumor directly caused tomorrow. But what has been proven is that exposure to these chemicals that they put into cookware over a long period of time can be carcinogenic. Teflon type nonstick coatings have been under the microscope now for a long time. And Teflon, the brand and others, 3M and the ones that make the, the chemical, did a tremendous job on flipping the script when it became known clearly and definitively that the chemical that they'd been using was directly carcinogenic. They did a great job flipping the switch and they changed the chemical by a small amount and went to the marketplace and very loudly started to proclaim that they had fixed the chemical and there was no problem going forward and it didn't have any of the damaging chemicals before. This has been proven also to be a lie and the issue around the chemical still being carcinogenic is there. They, their way that they get around this is by using such a small amount in each one of the pans that is made that it isn't above the threshold to be thought of carcinogenic. But the chemical that is produced in the plant and also then the waste afterwards is still highly carcinogenic and gets into our environment. For a long time, since the beginning of ceramic cookware, it has been touted as the green alternative, the healthiest choice, that it is completely benign and there is no problem. The first generation, maybe so, because it was so crappy and it worked so badly that maybe it was just made out of the greenest stuff possible. But over time, customers have demanded better and they have improved. The quality has become better. The quality is in like the durability of them. But the question here is what's in the chemical makeup of that quasi-ceramic coating. The story of ceramic has become so successful for manufacturers to get away from using nonstick that even brands like Hexclad have jumped on this bandwagon. So they have just released this new prepared, proprietary blend of ceramic nonstick on Hexclad. And this, other big brands have done the same sort of thing to get away from the terms PTFE or, or PFAS chemicals, what they like to group and call forever chemicals. But the thing here is that they say what they've done, but they're not showing they're just one example. They're not showing what it is that they actually do do. They're like, we've gone away from this bad thing to something other, and it's good for you or better or healthy or whatever they want to term it, but they're not showing exactly what it is because that's a secret. They couldn't tell you what the ingredients were because that's a secret. So you just have to trust us in this industry that is directly poisoned and directly killed people. Like they've, these people that make these nonstick coatings have been found directly liable for making toxic chemicals and pouring them into our environment. And pan companies have been happy to just use this stuff happily for the entire duration of this, this existence. And now they're like, oh, we fixed it. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's healthy. This is totally fine. Just trust us. However, I know how people want to use coated cookware. I get it. It is still a massive big industry and lots of people just want it to be simple and easy. So what do we do here? It's become clear now after you know, testing and the push and beginning of regulation that ceramic could have some very toxic chemicals in it, even maybe more so than what Teflon had. Teflon to a lot of people is just a no-go. 
So what do you do if you want a good nonstick coated egg pan? Well, there might be one solution. There's an organization in the US called NSF, so NSF certified. You may have seen that in some of the products you've bought before. They're an organization that certifies all types of things in all types of industries. They set the standards based on different factors, you know, government regulation or whatever it is, and they set the standards on whatever it is they're testing, and they test those standards, and if the brands meet those standards, then they get to put the little NSF sticker on their brand. Kind of like organic. So these guys just, just set up a standard for testing PFAS in food processing and food equipment. This certification in cookware is called the NSF 537 PFAS free certification. So if you see the NSF sticker on a coated piece of cookware, you know that that at the moment is the very highest standard that is available. So that's a very good step, I would say. So if you're in that camp, like I really got to have that egg pan and that's what I'm going to buy, maybe this is a direction for you. You know, there's a way that things could give you some clarity on which way you're going to be buying your cookware. This is a positive step. But what I'm going to be really fascinated on here, that this is a clear way through, and I'm sure every single manufacturer of coated cooker is going to know that this standard is now available, and they're going to be, like, this is a for-profit business, they're going to be selling this certification to the pan makers. Hey, get it sticked and use our, our kind of assurance seal. But how many are actually going to do it? I'm really curious.